Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X researcher and professional physicist. And today I'd like to discuss with you one more of my articles. And this one is on why does the sun have so many coronal holes? And figure one shows an illustration of a corona hole in a plasma loop on the sun. The sun's magnetic field lines usually form these loops close to the sun, and the sun's plasma, which is made up of mostly ionized hydrogen with some other particles like ionized helium, and even some ionized iron flow between these looping field lines, thus forming plasma loops. But sometimes the sun's magnetic field lines do not form loops close to the sun. And instead, the sun's magnetic field lines flow straight out from the surface of the sun. And at these points on the sun, what forms is what we call a coronal hole. And particles flow very fast. They actually spiral along these magnetic field lines away from the sun. And what that does is it causes an area of lower density to form on the sun. And this area, because of the lower density, also has a lower temperature. And because it has a lower temperature, it will look darker than the, the rest of the surface of the sun. Now, particle flux refers to the rate at which particles flow through a certain area. The particle flux from corona holes is much higher or faster than from other regions on the sun. The normal solar wind speed, and what we see here, these arrows represent the normal uh, solar wind which originates in the sun's corona. The fast solar wind, though, originates below the surface of the sun, so closer or closer to the surface. So the normal wind speed is about 400 kilometers per second or 0.9 million miles per hour, but the fast wind speed, which originates in the coronal holes, it has a speed uh, of about 750 or 1.7 million miles per hour or faster. On July 16th, we experienced speeds of 3,000 kilometers per second or over 6 million miles per hour. Now, because the large amounts of particles uh, leave the sun's corona from a corona hole, the amount of plasma in that region decreases. And that leads to a lower density in the corona hole and therefore a lower temperature which causes the coronal holes to look a lot darker. Now, uh, the magnetic field lines that, um, well, the sun creates its own magnetic field due to currents of ionized particles on its surface and in the corona. And so the sun generates a magnetic field. And, but magnetic fields, we have to understand, always form closed loops. There is no such thing as open magnetic field lines. And this is illustrated here with this bar magnet. We see this bar magnet generates a magnetic field, which loop looks in this the form shown, but the magnetic field lines always form closed loops. They connect through or inside the magnet itself. So this is a characteristic of magnetic fields, that they must always form closed loops. Now this means that the magnetic field lines which originate at the sun's corona holes must connect to another object that also generates a magnetic field. If there were to be no other sources of magnetic field anywhere near the sun's magnetic field lines, then um, there would the sun would magnetic field lines would just be open, which is impossible. So a corona hole is actually an indication of the presence of an object somewhere in the sun's region of influence or in the solar system. And therefore, the sun must connect to that object magnetically in order for the magnetic field lines to close. And this is illustrated in this figure. So what we have is the sun. We have a corona hole on the sun. We have the magnetic field lines flowing out from the sun. And it is connecting to this other star. And then there is a returning of the magnetic field lines back to the sun. And 
then the magnetic field lines connect inside both stars. And what we see as well is the sun's particles flowing along these field lines towards the star and the star's particle connecting, um, well, flowing back along these connecting magnetic field lines. Now, um, the sun uh, has been weakening for years and this suggests that it is being drained by objects that have a lower electric potential energy than the Sun. So that would mean that the particles flowing from the Sun have a higher electric potential energy than the particles that are returning back to the Sun from the other star. So what we have is another possible mechanism through which these stars are draining the Sun and rejuvenating by gaining energy. They lose their low energy particles to the sun and they gain high energy particles back from the sun. Now the other thing that we need to look at here is the fact that the sun has a coronal hole at its south pole and this is has been there uh, permanently since um, well, it was there already in 2015, and we see it here in 2017. And this coronal hole would therefore suggest that there is an object stationed at the Sun's south pole that is connecting magnetically to the Sun. Now, as it turns out that um, there is something in the stereo A core 2 images that also suggests that there is an object at the Sun's south pole. And this, um, this is what appeared on the stereo A core 2 images on November 17, 2015, and is a dark shadow below the Sun. So this is a chronograph image, so it has what we call an occulter that blocks out the sun's brightest part and so that we can view the sun's outer corona. The size of the sun is actually the size of the white circle. This is the image that is available before that one, and it is from August 18, 2014. Between these times, there is no data available. So we don't actually know what happened to the sun, but we do see that there is no dark shadow there, and there is a dark shadow there. A dark shadow indicates that the sun's light is not being seen in this area of the corona. So there has to be something blocking that light in this area somewhere. Um, now, this shadow stayed there below the sun until March 4th, 2017, when there was a comet impact. So we see the comet tail here, right before, right below the occulter. We see the shadow still present there, and possibly associated, very possibly associated, with that permanent coronal hole at the Sun's south pole. After the comet impact, which may actually have impacted something before it reached the, the solar surface, we see a bright flash. That seems to indicate there was a large explosion at the Sun's south pole, and that uh, allowed the light from that explosion to invade that area so the shadow was gone. So what we see from that is, first of all, the shadow is not permanent, and it is caused by something. And Light emission in that area is definitely possible. So the comet impact seems to indicate that there is an object below the sun causing a dark area below the sun. The object did not emit visible light until the comet impact, which suggests that the object does not emit visible light normally. Only a star is able to cause the sun to, of course, have a permanent coronal hole because only a star would have a high enough magnetic field. Hence, this object is very likely to be a brown dwarf star that only permits infrared radiation or perhaps mainly infrared and some but very little visible light. 
But how is it possible for a brown dwarf star to be permanently connected to the sun so that their positions relative to each other do not change? Now, it is true that all objects in the universe seem to be in motion with respect to each other, but we need to remember that there is evidence of several stars now being in close orbits around the sun. And these stars are obviously attracted to the sun, and this suggests that stars act like protons in the nucleus, and therefore it suggests that the strong force seems to act not only microscopically in the nucleus in order to cause positively charged protons to be attracted to each other, but also on an astronomical scale, causing stars which are positively charged objects as well to be attracted to each other. It is therefore possible that one brown dwarf star found itself in a stable position just below the sun due to the strong interaction acting between the sun and that star. The star is not really stationary, though, as the sun is moving with respect to the galaxy. So what we have is the sun and this brown dwarf star below the sun traveling together through the galaxy. And this is possibly what it may look like. However, more recent information, actually a photograph taken by Scott Sio showed that there is an object actually embedded at the Sun's South Pole. So this object would actually be closer and part of it would actually be embedded or inside the Sun. So in conclusion, coronal holes seem to form due to the Sun connecting magnetically to other stars and this connection seems to be a factor in the Sun having weakened substantially in the last few years. The coronal hole at the Sun's South Pole and the comet impact on March 4, 2017 suggest that they may be a brown dwarf star permanently positioned below the Sun's South Pole. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.